relax and enjoy the show. Happy birthday to your third son, Julia. Uh, yeah, uh, yesterday it was, it got up to about 75, and it was awesome. We went out, my mom and I finished uh, planting our seeds round one because we were going to do succession planting every few weeks with a lot of the um, vegetables and herbs. So we finished round one yesterday. It was 95 degrees when we went in the uh, greenhouse. So we opened the windows and doors and let it cool down a little bit. So really, really fun. Um, I'm so excited. We have over a hundred different vegetables, herbs, flowers that, that we've planted. So we'll see what works and what doesn't and uh, keep you posted. So I have a bunch of new pictures and videos I have to uh, post on the uh, Fine and Dandy Acres Facebook page. We are getting a roof as we speak. They started putting the shingles on yesterday. So yeah, 45 degrees. Whoa, 73 in Jersey. That's pretty good for Jersey. Pretty darn good for Jersey. Um, so I watched a uh, webinar yesterday given by a cardiologist um, with new updates haha, on the nutritional uh, DCM or dilated cardiomyopathy. And uh, I, I wrote the statistics down somewhere, but do you think I can find that piece of paper today? No. Uh, so I'll have to give you what I have in my brain from memory. <laughs> okay. I have, I have old people's brains. So, um, but interestingly, uh, the, the, study, the original study where the FDA put out the warning and, and named companies and, you know, prematurely uh, said things about grain-free diets, um, they, there was an update at the Kansas State University. Um, there was a coalition that got together and looked at the studies and um, what had been done back in September, so September 20th of 20. Um, and there were some things that they came up with, and originally there were 540 cases listed of dogs and cats with DCM, and now it's uh, about 1,100. And uh, so when we look at heart disease in dogs and cats, 75% um, of the disease, heart disease that we see is mitral valve disease. So 75% of the cases are mitral valve disease. Um, only 10% of the cardiology cases, heart disease cases, are dilated cardiomyopathy. And there are 77 million dogs approximately in the U.S. That's where these studies are being done. So 10% uh, is uh, 7.7 .7 million dogs um, potentially could have dilated cardiomyopathy. Um, but I think uh, the numbers were, uh, we would expect, but not all dogs have heart disease. Of the dogs that have heart disease, we would expect something like 350,000 or more to have dilated cardiomyopathy. And uh, so right now we're looking at uh, 1,100 dogs. So it's still a very small population, and a lot of this may be getting blown out of proportion. But interestingly, of the dogs in the study, 37% are golden retrievers. And if I have my numbers right, it's something like another 17% um, ish. Uh, are dogs who are genetically prone to dilated cardiomyopathy. Uh, and car uh, golden retrievers have not historically been a breed that is um, thought to be genetically prone to dilated cardiomyopathy. Generally, we think of it as large breed dogs like wolfhounds, um, Great Danes. These water dogs, they're really interesting. They get dilated cardiomyopathy genetically as very young dogs, like under a year of age, and across the board they die. Um, so they have a very different disease than other dogs. Most of these dogs, it's it's uh, two to one males to females, 
and uh, it's usually a middle age, so like four to seven years is when they'll start having problems. So when we take out golden retrievers, we take out genetically predisposed dogs, our population that we're looking at is a lot smaller. So only 50% of the dogs in that study are dogs that we would not expect to be having a problem. Interestingly, in the golden retrievers, I don't know if it's just the golden retrievers or all the dogs, um, over two thirds of them had normal taurine levels. So this is not just a taurine problem. Only a third of the dogs had low taurine. Interestingly though, they did respond to a diet change. So if they were being fed a dry kibble grain-free diet and they were switched to a diet with grains, they, they did get better. They were also supplemented with taurine. So we have to look at it and say, well, did they get better because their diet was changed or did they get better because they were put on medications and were supplemented with taurine? So again, we don't have a controlled study where we're leaving the diet the same but supplementing taurine. And the dogs that had normal taurine levels on their, their blood testing were still supplemented with taurine and got better. Uh, so we don't, we don't know. So now the FDA is saying, no, we're not going to list brands of dog food uh, that cause problems. And the vet from Tufts who, who blamed, it, blamed the problem on bag diets, boutique, exotic, grain-free diets, well, that hasn't come to fruition because guess what? A lot of the diets incriminated have chicken, lamb, uh, pork, their fish, they're... they're normal proteins. These are not exotic proteins that are being blamed. Kangaroo was, was a little bit high on the list, um, but it wasn't these novel exotic things that were causing the problems. Uh, so they looked at legumes, so peas, lentils, uh, what we call pulses, which are basically ground up uh, bean or peas and uh, starches. Um, we know not for cats, cats have to have taurine in their diet. They're obligate carnivores. That's one of the reasons they're an obligate carnivore. Meat contains taurine, and if you are giving a cat, feeding a cat food that is low in meat, taurine is supplemented in the diet. For dogs, it hasn't routinely been supplemented in there. When we, uh, for dogs are able Have low taurine because they're making their own taurine if there isn't enough meat in the diet. When they look at uh, the amino acid profile of grains versus legumes, legumes are very low in methionine and cysteine, whereas grains are high in those. So when we take a, a dry kibble, for instance, and the main proteins and legumes are higher in proteins than grains. So what's happened is these pet food companies have said, we're going to take the cheap route. We're going to decrease the meat, but we can keep our protein content high by adding lots of peas. So we get these diets that are basically a pea-based diet, very little meat. Well, now we've got uh, lower levels of methionine, lower levels of cysteine, lower levels of taurine, and the dog can't make enough. So that kind of explains that one third of the dogs who actually had low taurine levels. Uh, the other thing that um, they said came into play was fiber in the diet. The higher the fiber, uh, the harder it was for the taurine to be metabolized and utilized. And uh, peas are higher in fiber than grains. So there's a lot of reasons why these high pea diets are a problem. It's not that, and, and this cardiologist was actually good. He said, no, I'm not going to say that. testing 
only one third of them actually had low taurine. And uh, back in 2005, there was a study put out about uh, a family of golden retrievers, a familial line. So they looked at this one breeding line uh, and all those golden retrievers were suffering from low taurine levels. Now, that was in 2005. That was before we were talking about grain-free dilated cardiomyopathy. So I think we've had a golden retriever problem for a long time. And when the study contains 37% golden retrievers, I think we need to be looking at, okay, maybe they fall into that genetically prone category. And so maybe they need to be treated differently. And maybe we need to be monitoring golden retrievers much earlier in life. And maybe we need to be measuring taurine levels. But not all these dogs test low. So the, the jury is still out, still out. Um, uh, so Tucker was diagnosed with DCM two years ago, taken off grain-free, added taurine. At his follow-up, he's no longer showing DCM, which is great. Um, you know, these dogs definitely get better when taurine is added to their diet. And uh, maybe some of these dogs have a bigger problem converting the taurine from uh, the methionine and cysteine. And so maybe when we lower those levels in the diet and we have a lower taurine level, <clears throat> there are going to recommend that you feed kibble anyway it's not an appropriate diet for dogs or cats so if we can start feeding whole foods high meat diets high moisture diets a lot of these problems go away because the number of animals in that study dogs I mean it is so low um, and that those may be I had a client with two Dobins they both had dilated cardiomyopathy they were raw fed dogs guess what that's a breed that is genetically prone to dilated cardiomyopathy uh, as a matter of fact I really would like to get another Doberman but uh, it's hard to find a line that doesn't have dilated cardiomyopathy these days so I'm you know <laughs> not setting myself up for heartache uh, that's the update. It was, uh, um, you had, you had Grange, you had a Bouvier OFA clear acquired DCM and pass, not going to have it happen again. Yeah. So, uh, you know, grains are not the answer. Taurine is the answer. Supply it with meat. They can make it from the grains, but the grains are not what's solving the problem. Taurine is solving the problem for a lot of these dogs. That is a meat based diet. My dogs have never been fed grains. Um, it's just not something that I think they need in their diet. And by the way, AFCO has no minimum requirement for carbohydrates in pet diets because there is no minimum requirement for carbohydrates in pet diets. They're just not necessarily needed. Pre I'm not a fan of prey model, but prey model diets work. And the amount of uh, vegetable matter in there is extremely low. If they're eating in the wild, they're eating the stomach contents that have already been digested. Don't Doberman people test their dogs yearly? Well, some do. <laughs> a lot do, uh, because it's become a really, really big, big problem. So, okay. Uh, gotta go. Lots to do. Working on my presentation for tomorrow. Okay. Uh, music. I think I have music. Let's see what we got here. We got music. And yes, I'm dancing because it's Friday and I'm dancing because it's going to be 80 degrees. Uh, there's no upper limit for amount of taurine to supplement. It's a very safe supplement. I had one golden retriever who was taking 8,000 milligrams a day because that's what it needed to keep his levels up. They're all different. Jean says her dogs are part of the original study. They eat raw and all were well above the norm. Yeah, I don't think we're going to have a problem with uh, raw fed dogs. One cavalier in the 560 dogs, but it still comes up frequently. Yeah, Jane, I agree. There's some truth in poor kibble. 
but not the add a cup of rice to raw diets. Nope, 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 don't need the grains. Alright, see you guys later.